says, Aaron makes my day. I look forward to the end of each video clip as it puts a smile on my face. Danyar says, Flurn episodes are like a treasure for photoshoppers. <laughs> Clayton says, Flurn has served as the foundation of my photographic journey, a place to recharge after a burnout or to seek the next big step in learning Photoshop. Jason says, I love when I submit a question, I get an immediate response. You guys make me feel so special. Because you are special, Jason. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on the all new, redesigned, totally awesome Flurn.com. We spent a ton of time making the best website we could, and we launched it this week in line with Fan Appreciation Week. So head on over and check it out. We're also having a sale right now, 30% off of all of our products on Flurn.com to announce our new website. Just use coupon code NEW site and I'm so excited this has been such a fun week our chance to show you guys how much we care about you guys as fans that's why we've created these super long intros and we're like you know highlighting as many people as we can because we really do appreciate everything that you guys do because we couldn't have flirt without you because we basically we get all of our ideas for our episodes from you we get our images from you <laughs> and we get all of our feedback and learn how to get better and better what we do so thank you guys so much and uh, to wrap up fan week but we got a great episode for you today it's it's all about using liquify tool we're gonna do some really cool things with coloring as well and if you guys are just kind of like getting early on into photoshop this is gonna like blow your minds to see the really amazing things you can do with a liquify tool and if you guys have been using photoshop for years and years there are going to be some things that we're going to teach you probably about a liquify tool that you've never seen or done before so let's get into the episode it's going to be really really cool all right, so today's image is brought to you by Joachim. It's a really, really cool photo. It's just basically a simple fashion portrait. And uh, there, he, Joachim said, can we get this like some Andy Leibovitz style coloring? And I was like, okay, we can definitely do that. And, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and get in the liquify tool as well. Cause I think there are some really great things that we can do to this image to kind of help it out. So let's go ahead and start off with their coloring. Now, like Andy Leibovitz and um, you know, other portraits artists like Norma Jean Ray and guys like that, um, they use all these different adjustments basically to change around the color levels with their shadows and the highlights. So that's, that's one thing they do in Photoshop. But also keep in mind a lot of what they're doing is in camera. So like Annie Leibovitz for instance, and she's got a great book out, uh, it's called Annie Leibovitz at Work. And it's, it's a really good book. She talks about kind of like developing her style as a photographer and she says that she adopted using a gray seamless as part of her style. So, you know, like a lot of people were shooting on white or shooting on black. She kind of like used the gray. She was one of the big early proponents of using gray seamless as a backdrop. And you still see it in her work today. So um, if you're trying to like imitate someone's style, I think that's a really good idea as far as learning goes and um, using, you know, basically think about things like that. Like um, Annie Leibovitz uses a, a wind machine quite a bit in her, in her images. She's always using complementary colors. Her color palette is on point every single time. And then she's got that gray backdrop. And uh, usually her backgrounds are relatively dark. And then she adds like blues and greens into those backdrops. So I'm going to do what I can as far as color toning on this image. But keep in mind, if you are looking for that like point of view of another photographer or you're looking to recreate a style, keep in mind there are a lot of things that go into the image uh, before you actually take the photo that are going to really greatly affect afterwards. And then the editing is like, you know, a little bit of push and pull. All right, so let's get into this. If you guys want to color tone your image, I'm a huge fan of using levels for this. Um, we're going to see RGB. Basically, this is going to bump up your black point, making your blacks a little bit lighter. And over here is going to make your whites a little darker. Now, if we go into our different colors, you can see the red. If I take this and start to bring this from the left to the right, it's gonna put some red into our shadows. And if I take this guy and bring this to the left, it's gonna put some cyan into our highlights. So let's go ahead and play around with our shadows first. Let's go ahead and see that, you know, green is gonna put more green into the shadows. There we go. And then blue is gonna put more blue into the shadows. So kind of playing around here, you'll, you'll find that you can really get quite a bit of control over what's going on in your highlights and your shadows put a little more or red. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. Let's put a little bit of cyan there, go to our blue channel and pull this down. There we go. Let's see, pull that up a little bit and play with our green channel. So a lot of the color toning that I see anyway in these type of images 
this is exactly how you do it. You just grab your different color channels here and you, you push and pull these values to get something that you're interested in. Now you can totally stack these as well. Let's just take a look at what that did before and the after. And it does do a really cool job at toning the image. Um, you can stack these. So like if I wanted to create another level adjustment layer, I could do that and just go over top of it. The green, I could push like my mid-tone greens to the left or the right if I wanted to do that. Or I could add some magenta into the highlights or a little bit more green into the shadows. Sometimes what I'll do as well is if like, I, <laughs> let's just go a little bit extreme to kind of show you guys the example. Um, we've gotten a bit extreme there. You can mask this in. So like if I hit Command I and then grab my gradient tool and then I were to like mask this in the bottom left. Like, so like you can get a different, you know, color tone, like, you know, something like that would be just, you see this a lot of the time in fashion magazines and things like that. It's just like a, you know, a weird color tone that's kind of brought across the image. Or you can even do something like fill it all with white and then change the blending mode to something like overlay or soft light and it's gonna give you a slightly different effect there as well. So keep in mind when you're doing color toning, you can do most of what you need to do, you can do with, uh, with levels and that's, that's one of my favorite ways to color tone images. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and group those and double click and call this color. Very cool. And I think that did a nice job with this photo so far. Now, the big thing I wanna show you guys in this episode is the liquify tool and kind of like the differences in an image you can make with the liquify tool. And this image in particular, um, it's probably done like on purpose, but her jacket is just way too big for her. It, it's huge on her, it doesn't really fit. And um, it, in my opinion, it could, we could really bring this in a lot more and it would, it, I think it would just look a little bit better. So liquify tool, a lot of people think about like, okay, I want to make a fat person skinny or I want to like, you know, get rid of a double chin or whatever it is. Um, I just want to, you know, like get, get that going in your mind that the liquify tool can be used for many other different things. Um, I fix wardrobe with the liquify tool all the time. Hair fixing with the liquify tool is perfect. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to use the liquify tool, some of the advanced features in there, and um, then we can get into actually editing the image. So to use the liquify tool, we're gonna make a new layer, shift option command N, and then shift option command E, and that's gonna make a stamp visible. And basically this is just a layer that it's a copy of everything you see, okay? So it's a layer, but it contains all the information from the color group and the background. And we need this if we're gonna use the liquify tool because we can't use the liquify tool on a blank layer. So let's go to filter and then down here to liquify. And I'm just gonna kind of run you through the dialogue of uh, what we've got over here. All right, the, this guy on the very top left, is our forward warp tool. And this is pretty much the, just about the only tool that I use in the liquify tool dialog. It's, a, it's the most powerful tool in my opinion and uh, you don't really need much else. Here's how it works. Let's go ahead and click on our advanced options. You wanna bring your brush size up, in my opinion, a little bit larger than you think you may need it. So if I were to like try to, you know, she's got a little bit of indent right there in her hair. Having the brush this small, you can see, if, first of all, the pressure is way too high. If I'm clicking and dragging around, I can't do much with this. So I need to bring my pressure down so it doesn't affect the image as much. So I can, I can be a little more subtle with it, right? I also wanna, usually I'm gonna bring my density up and that's just gonna help affect like a larger area within the radius of your circle. So if my density, let's just show you guys. If my density is way down, it's gonna just affect like towards the center there. Okay, bringing my density up it's gonna affect all the way out to, towards the edges. All right, so density up and then pressure down usually. And brush size, I want it to be a bit larger than I basically think that I need. So if I'm trying to fix out that even point there, you kind of like give it a little bit of round area, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, really cool. So basically using the forward warp tool. Now there are other tools like the reconstruct tool and this basically will just paint back. This is like an undo tool that you can paint, which is really, really cool. This is the smooth tool, and this is gonna like help to smooth out creases and things like that. Um, we're gonna get started in getting into some of these other tools that, in my opinion, they're just, they're a little bit unpredictable, like the twirl clockwise tool. Um, you can, you know, click and start painting with this. It's gonna twirl clockwise. And although this is cool, I don't find it that useful, right? Like that's not helping. I, I can't think of many places, <laughs> especially not there, where this would actually help out the image. Um, then we have the pucker and the bloat tool. The bloat tool just kind of pushes things out and the pucker tool pulls things in. So this is our pucker tool and it's gonna pull things in. All right, it's not a bad tool, but I find that I can't control it nearly as well as I can the forward warp tool because it, it kind of just like, 
it'll it'll start just going, and then um, it's kind of hard to stop it once it once it starts. All right, and then our bloat tool is basically the same thing, but it's going to push everything out. So if you wanted to, I don't know, if you wanted to give someone like really big arms, you could definitely do that. That's um, kind of funny, actually. Yeah, there we go. We're done. <laughs> You can thank me later. I just made you look amazing. All right, and then we have things like, this is our freeze mask. Let's just go and hit cancel. I'm gonna open up our liquify dialog one more time. Okay, now the freeze mask actually is really helpful. So I'm gonna use the freeze mask, and basically when I paint with the freeze mask, these are areas that are not gonna get affected by our image. So let's say that I did wanna adjust her hairstyle a little bit, right? But I don't want to affect her face. What I'm doing is painting a freeze mask over top of that, then I can use my forward warp tool and I can kind of push and pull my hair. So let's say I want to smooth her hair out a little bit more right around this area. There we go. But I don't want to affect her, hair, her face at all, right? I want her face to stay exactly where it is. And even if I tried to affect her face, it's not going to happen. So it's a really great way to kind of like restrict wherever you're actually trying to adjust in Photoshop. You can use the eraser tool, the freeze mask eraser tool, to just kind of erase that away after you're done with it. Let's go ahead and hit OK so you guys can see the before and after. So there's a before and the after. Just kind of smoothing some of these lines out a little bit. All right, let's delete that. I'm going to make a new stamp visible layer, and now we're going to start over from scratch. Once we kind of know what the tools in the Lookify dialog box do and um, kind of how to use these. All right, so the big thing I think this image could really benefit from is cleaning up her wardrobe. So we're gonna grab our forward warp tool here. Let's make our brush size a little bit bigger. You can hold control and option and click and drag to the left and right to do that. You can also click here on the brush size. Okay, now basically <laughs> we're gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna make sure, you can see that her shoulder, you know, is probably about half as far. Let's just hit escape so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, her shoulder probably ends here, like her, her real shoulder, right? So, you know, I'm guessing her shoulder is, you know, coming in here, right about there, and then her arm's kind of coming in. She looks relatively thin, so, you know, that's probably what's going on. Probably over-exaggerating a little bit, but her shoulder's definitely not way out here. And, you know, you can tell because, like, that's her shoulder line, and then, you know, this fabric just hangs off of her. You know, her arm is probably about that wide, and then all this fabric is just extra, really, this is extra. And you can see that's why it bunches up and things like that. So um, this sort of thing happens, and you know, if that's the intended effect of the image, that's totally cool. But this is something that you can fix in Photoshop, and it'll make a huge difference. So let's go to Filter, let's go down to our Liquify, and uh, we're just gonna zoom in. So we're gonna start right up here on the top. Basically, we've got a, a bunching up here. We're gonna bring our uh, pressure, there we go pressure down a little bit. We've got it, her shoulder blade is kind of like bunching up there, so I'm just gonna smooth this out. And you can see I'm, I'm varying my brush size depending on like what I actually need to smooth out. So like this I wanna push in, I'm gonna make a nice large brush for that. So again, hold down control and option, and then click and drag to the left and right, and that's gonna make your brush larger and smaller. When I'm using the Liquify tool, I'm making my brush larger and smaller all the time. There we go. Let's bring our pressure down just a bit more. All right, a little bit of a smaller brush. All right, there we go. And depending on how much time you spend on this, you can really smooth. Um, you can really smooth this sort of thing out. Like we could get rid of every little crease and indent and things like that. And I don't think that sort of thing is necessary. We don't have to make it like you know absolutely perfect or anything like that. Let's bring my pressure down a little bit. All right, there we go. What I do want to do is just make this look a little bit like more form fitting. So we're going to bring, you know, we're going to bring the the underarm, the cut of the underarm up a little bit higher. We're going to push this down a little bit there. All right, and this is basically how I operate within the clone, st or sorry, within the healing brush. Ah, what is this damn tool? Liquify tool. This is how I operate within the liquify tool. I'm basically like pushing and pulling here. And it makes a huge difference. You don't really need to use the advanced tools, but making your brush larger and smaller, that's kind of, in my opinion, that's the key to using this tool well. So I'm gonna make my brush a little larger, pull this area up, make it smaller, push that in, 
and then the same thing with this side. So I'm just clicking and dragging here, and that's, that's changing the structure of my image because I'm just pushing and pulling the pixels. So again, a little bit smaller. Let's bring that whole sleeve in, so a larger brush. We're just going to pull the whole sleeve in to start off. All right, and then a smaller brush, and we're just kind of even out this bit of clothing there. So you can see, I don't have to go in and like clone stamp all these wrinkles out. Like that's, that's going to take forever, and it's probably not even going to look good, to be honest. The, that sort of thing is really hard to do. But you can still dramatically enhance the appearance of clothing um, using the liquify tool. You know, leave all those little wrinkles in. They'll just, it'll, they'll be really like downplayed um, using the liquify tool. All right, there we go. And you can see, I can really just go in and make this as perfect as I want to be. Now, areas on the edge here, I'm not too incredibly concerned about that most of the time because honestly, it, it's going to sample. Let's bring our shoulder down. It's going to sample, you know, I'm on a stamp visible layer. So if I do have some transparency that gets pulled in, like what's happening now, my layer underneath it will still be visible. So most of the time, that's going to kind of make up for itself. And I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit. Why don't we hit OK? All right, let's just zoom out. We can push this little thing in there. All right, so you can see it's just a lot of pushing and pulling, but you can make a huge difference. My big suggestion is, again, Make your brush a little bit larger than you need. Uh, constantly vary the size of your brush. So you're, you don't want to just try to knock out an entire image with one brush size. Like make your brush larger when it needs to be larger, smaller when it needs to be smaller. And then I would recommend keeping your density up a little bit higher and your pressure a little bit lower. All right. Let's hit OK and see what that did. All right, so we're going to zoom out here. and. We're just going to look at the before and after. So because this is a stamp visible layer, I can just turn this layer off and on, and that's the same thing as the before and after. So we're going to turn this layer off, and you can see there, and then back on. So basically, we just completely changed the fit of her wardrobe. I didn't change her face. I didn't change her body. We're just completely changing how her wardrobe fits her. And you can see, like, it's just it, it's gone from something that's you know four sizes too big to something that just fits a little better. Now, it's not going to make everything perfect, but it can make a huge change. So think about if you guys are uh, wedding photographers, brides and grooms, things like that. If they've got you know like a, a dress that's kind of like pushing out a little bit in some places, you can use this to push things in. And it, it's not just the person. Oftentimes, it's how the clothes fit the person. All right, so kind of turning this off and on. Now, the other reason I recommend using a stamp visible layer, remember this we talked about this earlier, right? Where it was kind of like a little bit, you know, weird right there where I kind of pulled this in. Well, I'm going to put a layer mask on there and I'm going to paint black on the layer mask here. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is just not really resolving, right? I was painting black on the layer mask, but we, then we just started to see this. So this is what I would say like, yeah, that's not exactly resolving how, how we wanted it to, right? Because if I paint this white back visible that's going to start painting this in. So you are going to have times when this is what happens, when it's just kind of like, OK, well, what do we do about this? All right, in this case, there are many different, situa there are many different things that would actually like, help this out. Um, most of the time, I would recommend grabbing like, a pen tool and just creating another selection and kind of doing this again. So we'll, we'll do this. Honestly, if you're not pulling in from the edges, this won't ever happen to you. But in this case, I figure we should cover it. So, what I'm going to do is basically make a selection right around here using the pen tool. Just real quick, nothing, nothing huge. There we go. And this is to kind of, kind of make up her, her leg detail. So I'm going to make that selection, right click with our pen. So I made that with the pen tool, right click in there. And then inside of this selection, I can use things like the clone stamp tool. So I can clone stamp this up a little higher if I'd like to do that. All right. Go over there. I'm just basically at this point uh, recreating her leg. <laughs> I didn't even expect that I would do this in this episode, but I'm glad that I get to do this. All right, leg recreation. And the reason I created that selection is because it, like, it gave me kind of like an edge or a boundary for her leg. 
All right, we're going to hit Shift Command I, which is going to invert our selection, and then we can just grab our brush tool and just kind of sample that color because it's in the background. All right, Command H is going to hide our extras in Photoshop. All right. There we go, and let's just use a slightly lighter color and kind of paint that in there. So that just gave us like a new edge in Photoshop that we can kind of work with there. All right, and just choosing the right brush here. Cool. I think I made that kind of a weird selection. <laughs> Her leg just kind of goes up. Not a problem. We could just use the liquify tool again. So we'll make a new layer, a stamp visible layer, and then I can reshape her leg so it just doesn't go up like that. So you want to make sure you get like a clean line, and then from there you can you can reshape all you want to. All right, cool. So this last little bit, really not necessary. Most of the time you're using the liquify tool but because we did bring some things in from the side, we had to recreate that just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and group those and look at the before and the after. So here's our before and our after. Cool, and that's the end for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, learning how to use the liquify tool. Again, my big suggestions are use your brush a little bit larger than you think you need, keep your pressure down and your density up, and then change your brush size often using the control, and then I'm having to look here, using control and option and then click and drag. If you guys are on a PC, it's gonna be control and alt and then right click and drag back and forth. And that's gonna get you using the liquify tool with a lot more confidence. If you like what we're doing here at Flurm, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We make free videos on Photoshop and photography every single week and they'll be delivered straight to you on YouTube if you subscribe to our channel. And if you have an idea for an episode, please leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to know and that's how we create our ideas for these episodes. And be sure to share Flurm with your friends. That way we can all grow and be good. That's just a good thing. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much guys and I'll flirt you later. Good. G. U. D. Good.